For watch enthusiasts, Orient is one of the most well-loved value brands around, as their watches are always known to punch way above their price point, constantly giving you some of the best bang for your buck around. I've not only reviewed, but I currently own a number of Orients, and they're one of my favorite brands just for that reason. However, what happens when Orient stretches into a whole new price tier? Is this value argument still valid? And that's what we're going to look at today, as this is the Orient Star 1964 Second Edition, which at the moment is Orient's top of the line diver, with an MSRP of 140,000 yen, or around $1,000 US. Now, there's a lot to like with this retro refresh, as well as a couple of disappointments, but as usual, we'll take this step by step. Although, before we dive into all of this, I do want to mention that I purchased this watch from Tuss Watches, which is where I've gotten a number of my Orients. Now, Tuss Watches knew I was going to be reviewing this and mentioning them in the review, so they did give me a nice discount when I bought it. But even with that, I still paid quite a bit for it, so just want to be transparent about it. And if you are interested in Orient or Orient Stars, Tuss Watches is a great place to start, especially if you're in the UK, as that's where they're located. Anyway. With that out of the way, let's talk specs. For this one, Orient went with a 40.2 millimeter wide case, as well as a bezel that's a little bit wider than that at 41 millimeters. Lug to lug is a tad long here at 49 millimeters, as well as this one is a little chunky at 14.4, which is more than a bit now that I think about it. In general, Orient stars are a little on the thick side, and I think a lot of that has to do with the power reserve indicator that's just integrated into their movement. Although here, that chunk does include a closed case back and a double dome sapphire with AR on the top. Water resistance is a diver's rated 200 meters, making this one of the few orients that has a diver's rating. Rounding everything out, you have a signed screw down crown, 20 millimeter lug width, and a hefty weight of around 175 grams, give or take a link or two on its bracelet. Now, I know everyone likes to skip ahead, but before we really get into the details, this is a watch that really requires some background, if for no other reason than to explain why it's the second edition. The short version of that is that in 2021, Orient decided to follow in Seiko's footsteps by looking back into their history and creating some retro refreshes. They started out with what they originally called the 1964, which we now call the first edition, and this was based on their very first diver. It looks like a fantastic watch, and honestly probably better than this one, and it was well praised among the hot horologists. But it was also an extremely limited run of 500 pieces, and basically unobtainium for the rest of us. So last year, Orient decided to follow that up with a version 2, and this one is not limited. But the trick is, is that this is also based on an entirely different watch, one that was also released in 1964, the Calendar Auto Orient. And for those of you who had some initial sticker shock when you saw this, just be aware that this is an Orient Star, not an Orient. If you're not familiar, it's just their higher tier of watches. And as it's a higher tier, that always demands a higher price. Although this specific watch is still on the higher end for that. When you think Orient Star, think Infinity to Nissan or Lexus to Toyota, and in some ways, Grand Seiko to Seiko, even though these aren't anywhere near the quality of a Grand Seiko. But it's sort of the same thing, a higher end collection within the company. And one last bit of info, within the Orient Star lineup there is another diver, which is aptly named the Orient Star Diver. Now this is a much more modern piece, and one I still consider to be a hidden gem in the watch world. I absolutely love it. But I wanted to bring it up because I'll be mentioning it here a few times as well. So don't get confused if you hear Orient Star Diver versus 1964. So now that we're all caught up, let's move on to the case, and this is where most of my concerns lie. As you would expect with an Orient Star, the finish is great, with a nice streamlined design, where the curvature of the bezel continues down the sidewall. It's very retro, and considering the origin of the design, that is to be expected. Yet the organically flowing sidewalls also end in these slim angular lugs, giving it a slight modern twist. And I particularly love the look of the lugs here, where the brushed finish abruptly stops as the angle shifts downward, both as it's heading towards the end and the side where the chamfered edge starts, as it seems to bring all those twists and turns into clear focus, giving the entire thing a sharper and more streamlined look. 
However, while I'm a fan of the lugs, I'm not too fond of this mirror polish sidewall, which really shouldn't be a surprise to long-term viewers. As for me, a large polished surface on a tool watch is always going to attract micro scratches over time. And I've unfortunately seen a fair amount of micro scratches show up just in the few months I've had this. And I don't think this is a negative against the quality of the watch. This is just life with polished surfaces, and you got to understand that going forward with this one. Although one negative thing I will say is that at this price point, Orient really should look into using some sort of anti-scratch resistant coating. With Seiko in this price range, they have their Dia Shield, and it does seem to be helping on my Marine Master Reduced. So if Orient really wants to keep playing in these deeper waters, that's something they seriously need to look at. And as long as we're talking negatives, one huge one I have is the fit of the end links into the case. The bracelet itself is pretty good, but the fit of the end links is horrible. There's no other word to describe it other than sloppy. With some gaps, some wiggles, it just makes the whole thing a little more rattly than it needs to be. I mean, I'd be okay with this type of fit on my Orient Kamasu, but not at this price point. It's honestly kind of shameful for an Orient star. Now, on the rear we have the case back, which is where you'd expect it. It's here with all the particulars, and there's nothing too ornate or crazy going on. It's a simple design, giving you what you need, with just a little bit of style. So, effective and classy. Which is something I think you can say about the sign screwed down crown. It is a little small, and your thumb may hit the bezel as you unscrew it, but it works, and works fairly well. As for the bezel, it is a bit stiff yet it's still one of the best actions I've seen come from Orient. 120 click, unidirectional, you know, all the usual here. The action is a little muted compared to some other brands, but the audible and tactile clicks still come through clearly. Also, the black bezel insert it uses is an anodized aluminum, making it more durable than a regular aluminum insert, which with an eye towards that retro styling is a great choice as it's fitting with a little bit of a modern twist. Yet, if you're looking at it with modern eyes, not so much, as at this price point, ceramic is more the bezel of choice. Moving on to the dial, and here I should probably point out that there are two very different colorways, both with very different styles. Now, this is obviously the black version with this beautiful piano black dial. Yet the other colorway is a teal with a gorgeous fume gradient. I think that one may be the popular choice, but it may just depend on what you want, if you want something more modern or something more classic looking. And in this case, I decided to try the more classic version. One of the best things about this watch is this glossy black finish of the dial. Just think retro Rolex, where it's this beautiful black abyss and the indices just seem to be floating in it. It's truly wonderfully done and I can't say that enough. Yet at the same time, it's also one of the more frustrating things about it. And from some of my shots, perhaps some of you know where I'm going with this. As between this glossy, reflective black mirror of the dial and the double dome sapphire, the 1964 version 2 is one of the most reflective watches I've ever had to shoot. As this thing tends to pick up everything. I like to think that the teal version doesn't suffer from this, but this one is just a pain to shoot. Which is more of a challenge when you're filming it than say in the real world but this still does translate into some glare when you're out and about. Now, to be fair, there are two ways to look at this. Retro watch fans might look at it and say it's fitting, as after all, even Rolex with their beautiful dials didn't start putting air on their crystal until a few years ago. But with an eye more towards the modern, and this is where I fit in, I think this gets a bit distracting, so I do rank this as a problem. The Double Dome Sapphire looks great on its own, but whatever amount of AR Orient has used on this, they seriously need to up that by a factor of 10, just to compensate. Anyway, let's get back to the dial layout. For the most part, it's a bit subby-like, at least retro-wise, where it's a mixture of dashes and smaller dots, as well as this larger triangle at the 12. It's also worth pointing out here that nothing is applied, it's all painted on. And that does include a silver frame for the date, the power reserve meter, and a very fine silver chapter ring that sits on the outer edge. But thanks to the smaller dots and that thin chapter ring, the dial also has a rather clean look to it, despite everything going on. 
Although I have had some comment that it looks a bit awkward, maybe too clean, that everything seems to be pushed way too far out. Then topping everything off is a sword and a ice cream cone or bird beak, whatever you want to call this hour hand. But all in all, it's a fairly simple design. And I think these macro shots show that Orient did a fantastic job with what they were trying to do here. While nothing is applied, everything is still well defined, with the silver paint and white loom coming through brilliantly against the black glossy backdrop. In a lot of ways, what Orient has done here is very much keeping with the retro inspiration, including a few retro inconveniences. But overall, it's a classic, beautiful looking design, and if that's what you're into, you're gonna absolutely love it. Yet, at the same time, if you're looking at this with modern eyes, it's a little bit lackluster. And if that's where you lie, you might think the dial is a little too simple, maybe a little too clean with way too much unused space. Overall, the 1964 is a really well-made watch, but I think the design here is going to be a bit polarizing. And speaking of polarizing things, let's talk about the power reserve meter. It's one of those things that makes an Orient star an Orient star. It really is their star feature. Now, some love this because of the added functionality, and others hate it because it breaks up the symmetry. Regardless, I think what they've done here is pretty interesting. Every other Orient I've seen, the power reserve is something that really helps it stand out. Yet here, the thin silver print, the thin hands, it's really there when you want to read it, otherwise it kind of blends into that backdrop. Making this easily the most subtle application of it I've seen. Probably because the original didn't have it. So this way, it lets Orient honor that original design, yet still bring it up to modern Orient standards. Moving on and turning the lights down low, we get a glimpse of the loom. Loom is quite good here, where it's nice and bright with a green profile, and I think it is one that should last you mostly through the night, as not only is it superior to my Marine Master Reduced, but it also outlasts a standard turtle. Now it's not quite as good as the regular Orient Star Diver, that one is a true king of loom, and very few things are. But overall, it's still great loom. For the movement, we have Orient's in-house F6N47. It's an upgraded movement from the standard F6922, which is used in most of the normal Orient lines, as it includes not only the enhanced power reserve indicator at the top, but also an enhanced 50-hour power reserve. In the grand scheme of things, I think it's going to be most comparable to one of Seiko's 6R series. Bracelet-wise, it's good, and it's definitely an improvement over what was on the original Orient Star Diver, with the one exception being the fit of the end links, and we've already talked about that. You have solid end links, solid links secured with a pin and collar system, and a nice milled clasp. The design of the bracelet is in keeping with the watch's style, mostly tooly with a little bit of refinement. So it's an oyster style bracelet that's mostly brushed with these polished center links. There's also that goofy bracelet extension system that Seiko and Orient keep using, but at this point most of us just ignore it, as no one I know really uses it. And at this point, if Orient and Seiko really want something like this that actually works, then they should look at some sort of on-the-fly adjustment system in the clasp. The only other negative aspect to point out is with the male end links, as they make the effective lug a little longer than it needs to be, and thus makes the watch wear a little larger than it needs to. Now, the end links do come out at a very aggressive angle, and that does compensate for some of that, and on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it is quite comfortable. The end links just seem to hit the natural curvature of my wrist. But others may not be quite as lucky, and with female end links, it pretty much alleviates all of that anyways. And lastly, let's talk value, and this is really where the last of my concerns lie. With an MSRP around $1,000 US, value is not good. There is a value argument to be had here, but it's really the same one you'd use when you're looking at Seiko's of this price, which oftentimes is more about what you want than getting a lot of bang for your buck. So it's not so much that there's no value here or that the value is truly bad, it's just not great when you look at everything else that's out there. And I think that's really my biggest disappointment with this watch, as Orients across the board are known for giving you a lot of bang for your buck. 
To the point that every Orient I've had, from the humble Bambino on up, I'd easily put against a watch that costs twice as much. And that's especially true with the Orient Star Diver. But this is really the first Orient I've ever run across where I can't say that. It's pretty much priced as I'd expect it to be. So again, it's not necessarily a lack of value, just kind of disappointing value and not what you'd expect when you think Orient. I'd love to put this up against, say, an Oris, but it's more on par with the Seiko at the same price. Although the whole value argument here is at MSRP. And one of the tricky things with Orient is that prices are always fluctuating wildly. Typically, you find them for much less than MSRP on the gray market. But every once in a while, you do find something crazy. And that's the case here with Orient USA. I truly do not know what crack they're on. Sorry guys, as much as you may want this to be a Grand Seiko, you can't just up the price and pretend. It doesn't work that way. Anyway, typically prices are going to be lower. And if you happen to run across one of these in the future from around 500 to 800 bucks, you know, basically King Samurai, King Turtle level, then at that point, I think it'd be an awesome buy. But above that, and it's a whole other story. And I think there are a lot better watches for the money out there for you. Bottom line, there are really two ways to look at the Orient Star 1964 version 2. And this is something I have been hinting at throughout the review. I've heard some people say this reminds them of a vintage Rolex or Omega, or maybe one of the newer 65 Oris Aquas. And if you're looking for something more affordable than that, it still has that retro feel and isn't an homage, then this retro refresh is just about perfect for you. Yet the other side of that coin is that if you're someone who likes something more modern, and typically this is where I fit in, then it's really hard to recommend this one. As there are just so many other great watches out there at this price point or even less. And I think a lot of those are just gonna give you a little bit more for your money. And one in particular would be the original Orient Star Diver. As nice as this is, part of me wishes they just made a smaller version of it. And that's the Orient Star 1964 version two in a nutshell. Now, as usual, let me know what you think about this one down below, as well as what other Orient Stars are out there that have caught your fancy. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.